Father God, we enter into your presence today and nothing compares. People have spent thousands of years trying to disprove you, trying to better you, trying to ignore you. And just a glimpse outside the window makes it impossible. A glimpse through a telescope or a microscope just gives us an idea of your precision and your vastness. Father, we ask you to change our hearts, change our lives, change everything to do everything we do to glorify you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning and welcome. I'm going to, oh, this is one for today. You were given one of these today. This is awesome. So there is uh, some announcements we're going to go through. But in front of you first, there are response cards and there are envelopes for appropriate things that go in each of those. They all go in the offering box that's in the back on the table. So just a few things. Um, first thing, uh, an opportunity to go beyond Sunday morning. Next Friday is our food closet. And there's always a uh, need for help. Many hands make the, make the burden light. So there is all kinds of levels, all kinds of things that, that can be done on a uh, food closet Friday. So please uh, join us for that. You can also talk to, who would they talk to? Talk to Bob for today, because I, I can't immediately see one of those food closet yokels out there. So, um, but this is something to, to take what we do on Sunday mornings, take that we do all week, and then give. On Friday, this coming uh, is food closet. More information. There is also kind of thing that uh, there is like this innocuous kind of random email shooting around um, that looks like it may be from Pastor Bob. He's kind of told me that, no, it is not. So if you get an email and it's not from bobgefc at gmail.com, spam it. Get rid of it. Don't pay attention to it. Don't open it. Don't even think about it. So, and then if you have any questions, you can talk to me or talk to Bob. So uh, just throw those to the curb. You don't need to be worried about that. Now, Adam Allsweet has something to share. Well, good morning, everybody. Once again, I wanted to come up and let you know what's going on on Wednesday evenings. Um, so for those that haven't heard or haven't joined us, I'd like to officially invite you to join us to the gathering on Wednesday evenings. It's from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. And normally what we're doing is a meal and fellowship and worship and time in the word. Um, out of that, a few weeks ago, uh, there came the desire to dedicate a time of prayer and fasting. And through that, we wanted to invite the whole congregation to be part of that. And so that's partly, last week I came up and invited you, and this week I'm coming up to invite you because it's starting tomorrow. And um, it's gonna continue through Wednesday. Uh, so from the 18th through the 20th is the official timeline. Uh, for many, it'll actually be starting tonight because, you know, we'll eat dinner and then that'll technically be the last meal for those that are going to do a full three-day fast. Um, but with that, we're not, we want everybody to participate to the level that the Lord leads you to be involved. For some, that may be a full three-day fast. For others, it may just be a meal within that three-day period. And others, it'll be somewhere along that whole spectrum from three days down to one meal. So uh, we don't want to tell any of you how you should be taking this time for prayer and fasting. We want you to be led by the Lord in how you do it. Um, with that, uh, Bob asked me to, to say something this morning, and I'm glad that he did because it really, uh, my mind wasn't there. We did talk about it on Wednesday. Uh, and it did specifically come up, but it was brought up in a greater context of what the Lord wants in a prayer and fasting. And so because Bob asked me to do this, I want to take a minute and give a little context to, to something with it that, that really is important. So in Isaiah 58, um, verse 5 down through verse 7, it says, Is it a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head like a bulrush and to spread out sackcloth and ashes? 
Would you call this a fast and acceptable day to the Lord? And what the Lord is doing here is he's given, um, he's admonishing them because they were making a fast about them and their selves and their self afflictions and making sure everybody knew it. And that's not what the Lord wants in a fast. It, he goes on to say what he does want in the fast. And it says in verse six, is this not the fast that I have chosen to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free and that you break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out? And when you see the naked that you cover them and not hide yourself from your own flesh. So you see the difference between what they were choosing to call a fast and what the Lord wanted in a fast. And so what, what Bob had asked me to share was that in this time of fasting, to please not put yourselves in a place where your health is at risk. If you think self-affliction is going to make the Lord hear you better, you're mistaken. Because it's not about self-affliction, it's about the condition of the heart. And it's really about shifting the focus of self-pleasure that we just naturally have, right? I don't think anybody here is immune to, to that desire to make sure that we're meeting our own needs. So it's a time of shifting from that, that self-focus, to the focus of others. And in that time of shel- uh, shifting that focus, we're looking to the Lord to see what his desires are for our lives, for the lives of the body here, the church, and the lives of the community around us. And that's what this fasting time is for. It's so that we could seek the Lord through prayer and fasting to see what he would like to do in our own lives, what he would like to do in the lives of this current congregation, and what he would like to do in the lives of the community around us. So anyways, I got the thumbs up from from Bob. I nailed it. Okay, so (laughs) with that, um, I'll just finish up. There's uh, a couple things. One, the gathering. We have a Facebook page. I'm really hoping that during this time of prayer and fasting, uh, that Facebook page, it's called The Gathering. And uh, if you're on Facebook, if you just type in The Gathering, G-E-F-C, Groveland Evangelical Free Church, you should be able to find the page follow it, and we can leave comments for one another, encouragements for one another. It's a way that we can be in communication as a church with one another during this time of prayer and fasting. Uh, The other is when we come together on the 18th, so this coming Wednesday, uh, because we are in that time of prayer and fasting, even though we would normally be doing a meal, this Wednesday we won't because that time of prayer and fasting will end at the time the, the gathering kind of comes to a close this coming Wednesday. Um, but there will be a lot of time for fellowship, prayer, and worship. So it's going to be a fun night. It's going to look a little different than normal. Um, so I hope you guys come and join us. And as we close this Wednesday night, what we're going to do is close in a time of communion with one another in the Lord. So anyways, I hope you guys can join us. I hope that clears up any muddy waters that might have been there on on the expectations of what prayer and fasting is. So with that, we'll jump back into worship. Good morning. morning. I think we should just keep going. (laughs) You know, Adam was um, mentioning um, this prayer and fasting and he also mentioned sort of what got us going besides studying the word is he mentioned the darkness. When he was here and growing up, there was a darkness like throughout the world, actually, there's a tremendous darkness. But when he came back with his family, he says, man, it's gotten a whole lot darker. And um, it's a concern for all of us. And I think we've, you know, in the last 20, 30 years, it just keeps getting darker and and we ask ourselves what what's darkness look like and basically it's anything that separates us from God separates us and um, you know absent of God and um, John first John says 
God is light, and in him there is no darkness. And Proverbs 4.19 says somewhat the same thing, but it says, But the way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. Darkness is really a spiritual void. And... Um, There's a sense of hopelessness, despair, life's purpose. Ecclesiastic is basically, it says, the purpose you know, over time, it's really becomes meaningless without God. And um, what that means is evil and weakness, um, it's basically a lot of things. It it's, um, can be addictions. Basically, people hurt people or others. There's materialism, selfishness, pride, jealousy, envy, pornography. There's anger, hate, prejudice. And the list goes on and on. And uh, we all have this battle with darkness, really. But the difference is we have Jesus. We have God in our life, most of us do. And um, let's, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we know that you are powerful, all-knowing, omnipresent and, and sovereign over all creation. You're just so worthy of our praises. Lord, we thank you for the gift of salvation, the gift of the Holy Spirit, and the gift of your precious word. We give, God, just give us this honest, earnest, pure hearts as we pray for your perfect will to be done in people's lives on the hill, including ourselves. Let us love like you, Lord. We pray, Lord, for um, the Holy Spirit to fill us up. Lord, we ask you for your divine power to go ahead of us. To open the people's eyes, Lord. To really free them from the bondage of sin, Lord. Remove the veil of darkness in the world's up the world's trappings and allow them to recognize that there is a better way. Lord, your way, Jesus' way. Lord, prepare our hearts to respond to those who begin to see the light of Jesus and that the light shines through us, Lord. It's your light that makes everything beautiful and makes us worthy of, of actually being your people, Lord. That all people on the hill would become known, that they know your love, Lord, with all their heart, soul, mind, and their strength. That Jesus becomes their Lord and Savior. Lord, use us to love and minister to the seekers and the new believers that we build strong friendships and give us many opportunities to share your, your word, Lord, to help make disciples. And Lord, let us just all fear less and love more. Let the love of Jesus be our highest goal. And Lord, I want you to lift up Pastor Bob in his teachings and preaching. Um, he's gonna be talking about the Holy Spirit and allow him to focus on those words and anoint his words so he, we can apply it to our lives and be able to share it with others. And thank you, Lord, for your unconditional love. We love you and we pray in your precious name. And all the people said, amen. amen. Thank you. You all right? Yeah. <laughs>
I can help you if you want. Well, um, <laughs> Josh's music, right? Yeah. I'm sorry, Josh. You want me to preach now? Okay. <laughs> thank you, Chris. And thank you to the band, the music. Um, Holy Spirit, come and fill us now. You preach. God used you today. I'm grateful. He's going to continue to use you. You're not done yet, right? You got another song, don't you? Good. I'm glad. We'll get there. Thank you. All right. Let's get into the Word of God. Hey, a moment of uh, personal privilege first. Let's see if I can get this thing to work. And uh, it's not doing anything, but I bet it will in a bit. Go there. Oh, cool. It's right there. Sweet. All right. Now what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> I suppose that was my fault too. <laughs> I can't blame anybody else. All right, well, let me know when you get, I got to get to scripture, and if we don't get there, we're going to make it. I got ways, and God's got a lot more ways than I do. While they're getting that going, a moment of personal privilege, I really want to lift this up. Um, I am so grateful he's back there working again. He's saving me right now. But uh, his name is Tom Rodanovich. <laughs> Did I get that right? Where's Maria? Did I get it right? Oh, man. All right. <laughs> I'm going to talk about Tom. I listened to his message last Sunday. And those of you that were here, what a treat. Serious. Really good sermon stuff. Folks, when you are the lead pastor and you go away to a family wedding, I can't tell you how personally grateful I am to be able to have a pastor on staff that preaches. That's a, that's a really big deal. And I just hope you all are as grateful as I am to that. So, all right, I've lost my screen there, but we're going to be okay. I am going to talk to you today. Now, we have been fishing, and I would really like us to continue to go fishing but if we're going to go fishing for people, we need the Holy Spirit. That's just fact. And unfortunately, the Holy Spirit is the most forgotten part of God. There's three parts to God. There's God Almighty, creator of heavens and earth. If you don't believe me, just go out to the rim, go stare at El Capitan, watch a sunset on Pine Mountain Lake. It just That's not an accident. That's divine. Look in the mirror. Think about how the brain works, the heart pumps, the amazing computer of the body. It's divine. There's Jesus Christ, the salvation of our lives. I'm not, you know, don't wish me luck. Seriously. If it wasn't for God, I wouldn't breathe. If it wasn't for the grace of Jesus Christ, I wouldn't have purpose. And then there's the third part the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. And that is the wrong scripture, but that's okay. We're just not going to make it today, but we'll be okay. We're just going to take the slides off. Something's wrong. That's last week, and I'm just going to read, okay? <laughs> it's all right. We're going to be okay. It's called grace, okay? That should be the middle name of our church. Now, I want to introduce the Holy Spirit to you, and the first thing that I want to talk about is patience. In Acts chapter 1, they were all gathered together. The resurrection had happened. Months, weeks, and months have gone by, and Jesus told them to hold on for patience. And he told them that Jesus would deliver them a gift, just like he told them before he was crucified. In John's gospel, I'm going to give you the advocate, the Holy Spirit. And they gathered together for patience. And I'm going to read to you from Acts. Uh, we don't have technology today, that's okay. But Acts chapter 1, I'm going to begin it in verse 6. Listen as the Holy Spirit gets introduced. Acts is the uh, right after the Gospels, because I see some of you. You know, the easiest way, if you're thinking, I don't know where the book of Acts is, turn to the table of contents. That's why they're there, okay? <laughs> if you don't know, and you don't need to go there if you don't want to, I'll read it to you. I'm here for you. But just turn to the table of contents. And the book of Acts has a page right there. Um, I would give you my page, but that would probably send you to San Francisco because I'm not sure it's the same Bible as in your pew. But here we go. Acts chapter 1. 
So when they, uh, beginning in verse 6, so when they met together, that's the disciples, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? In other words, are you going to do what I want you to do, Lord? Are you going to do what I, I we're going to get free from the Romans. Are you going to give me what I want? Verse 7, Jesus, he said to them, it's not for you to know the times or the dates the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Listen to that. When the Holy Spirit comes on you, does it say, Holy Spirit, I need you. Would you please come now? Does it say, oh, I could use you now, Holy Spirit? No, it says you will receive the power. We don't tell the Holy Spirit what to do. You will receive the power. We'll get there. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. That's the known world that they lived in. That's everything. They, that, that God covered everything that they geographically knew about. Minnesota's covered there. In case some of you don't know, I grew up in Minnesota. It's by Canada. Anyway, the ends of the earth. And after he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently, in verse 10, up into the sky, and he was going when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, disciples, people, all those believing. These angels said, why do you stand looking into the sky? With a question mark. This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way and you have seen him go into heaven. In other words, he's coming back again. Read the rest of the book when they get it. They haven't had it yet. We have. In the end, Christ wins. It's all going to work out. Amen. Amen. Lord, just, just help me hear what Chris did for me, and, and, and help me be open to the Holy Spirit. Help my words be your words, Holy Spirit. Fill us. Amen. Uh, we don't have the power of PowerPoint, but we have the power of paper. <laughs> I want to take that and look at that a little bit. First thing I want to talk to you about now is patience. Patience is a very hard thing for me. Okay, I went to Modesto yesterday. I had to go to a marina and to a Target, and I was there, and I was driving, and they have cars in Modesto, and they have traffic, and they have traffic lights, and you wait for the traffic lights, and you're about six cars back in your truck, and the traffic light turns green. Nobody moves. I have attention deficit disorder. I want to, and I have a truck. I should put a plow in front of my truck. That would move them. Anyway, <laughs> and you just, you keep waiting, and, and, and it's green, and it can't get any greener. And the car, and the very first one they can't see, it's not moving. It's like if I had a cell phone, hey, it's green. Patience. And then they start moving, and then I get up to the green light, and it turns yellow. <laughs> and I think, why did I leave Groveland? <laughs> You drive through Groveland on a Friday afternoon. That's all full of people. You drive 25 miles an hour because it says you're supposed to, and you're a pastor, so you should behave and have patience. And people want to cross, and you don't want to hit them. That's not good. Because <laughs> if you do, you'll go to jail, okay? <laughs> and you slow down, and you, they go, oh, you want me to cross? Yes. Come on, you can do it. No, I don't. Yeah, you can do it. And the guy behind you is from Minnesota. is honking his horn. Be quiet. No, you treat them with respect. They're coming here to Groveland, and they're pumping money into our economy, and I want them to for patience. <laughs> patience is a hard thing. No matter how, I, I know some of you, I've gotten to know a few of you, and, and that's good, and, and you have a lot better patience than I do, and some of you don't. It's kind of cool. But it's a hard thing to have. <laughs> I'm sitting in our, in our living room in our house. I love Kelly. I love her. She doesn't even know I'm going to say this, so I hope it's going to land well. Anyway, I'm sitting in our living room, and it's late at night, and I'm tired, and the news is on, and, and I'm kind of just winding down. And, and Kelly says, what do you think we should do with this room? 
There's a lot of men laughing right now. <laughs> All I'm thinking is get through the night without a home interior decoration thing here. <laughs> what do you think? And by the time this conversation is ended, we're painting the walls, we're buying new furniture, new car. I'm like, I just want to go to bed. And... <laughs> Patience, but when we get done, when she says that, and she does it so nicely, because she already knows where I'm going. We've been married for a lot of years, okay? She, she knows my mind. And she does it gently. What do you think we should do with this room? Go to bed? No, 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 we're not going there yet. <laughs> what do you think we should do with this room? Go to bed? No, Bob, come on now. And we start talking about pain. And when it's done, a month later, that room, and she will, she'll say this really nicely. Don't you think it looks, and it does. It looks a lot better. We have newer furniture. We have new paint. It's just really cool. But I don't want to go from point A to point B. I just want that to, you know, I want the elves to come in at night and just fix it. Patience. If we want to get to know the Holy Spirit, we've got to do it on God's terms. We got to have patience. You know, is this the time you're going to we'll get there, restore all of Israel? We'll get there. They were already in another avenue, but let's back up even into Luke's gospel. See, Luke and Acts go together in case you're wondering. The same author, Luke, wrote Acts. It was a book to cumulate, to, to continue the movie, the story, the truth of the resurrection. So Luke is adopted to Acts. No secret there. Back in Luke, in, cha in, in chapter 24, in Luke's gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, in Luke's gospel, the women went to the tomb early in the morning on Easter Sunday. We're all excited. We're excited about Easter Sunday. They find no body. The, the, the angels look at the women. They said, why are you looking for the dead amongst the living? He is not here. He is risen just like he told you. Go and tell the others. So after they get over the concept of believing something that can't be true, but it is, that I, I, I don't know how I handle all that. I mean, I believe in the resurrection with my whole heart. I don't know what I would be like that morning staring at an empty tomb. How many times would those angels have to say, he's not here? He's not here. <laughs> how many times would it take for me to grasp it's real, it's true. The resurrection just happened. Move on. And they go and they tell the others, and, 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 and this is why the Holy Spirit is the most forgotten part of God. Luke chapter 24, verse 11, you can look it up in your quiet time, verse 11, but the others, I'll add in, they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. NIV. They didn't believe them because the women seem like nonsense. Usually it's the other way around a lot more in the world. But it's, it's the men that, you know, seem to think of things. we got to think things through. But they seem like nonsense. The problem with the Holy Spirit, it's not the Holy Spirit's problem, it's ours. We're not that interested in getting too excited about the Holy Spirit because once we do, we have to move beyond Sunday morning. And that's a whole different level of faith. We say on Easter Sunday, Christ has risen. You know the saying, he has risen indeed. You know it, Christ has risen. He has risen indeed. And we say it's so excited because it's Easter Sunday. On, on, on Christmas Eve, we come in and we light the candle. And I can't wait for us to do this. And we sing silent night, holy night, to candlelight. Because we celebrate the birth of our Savior. But then Monday, January comes, we take the Christmas tree down and we put it down in the Christmas tree burning part or whatever that is and, and how we do that here because we don't like forest fires. When we get rid of Christmas, you know, the, and then Easter Sunday comes and then we, we move into April and January, you get the whole idea and oh yeah, Easter, resurrection, Holy Spirit. Do we want to know the Holy Spirit? That's the main question as we start this series, The Forgotten God, and I mean that forgotten God by forgetting the, part, the most important part, the Holy Spirit. Do we want to know the Holy Spirit? And if we want to know the Holy Spirit, we got to get beyond the nonsense. 
We got to be ready to do things like Adam is challenging us to do, spot on today. We got to move beyond Sunday morning, whatever that means. I don't want us to get all guilted if we aren't going to do that. The prayer fasting is something you decide to do. I'm going to be doing it. I'm going to be doing it during a breakfast time for me in some days, and I'm shifting it around in different ways so it matches up on things. But I can't, I'm looking forward to prayer. I'm looking forward to the Facebook page. But we got to get beyond Sunday morning. If we want to know the Holy Spirit, this is not patty cake. If we don't want to know the Holy Spirit, we can just settle for religious habit. It will work to some degree. But if we want to know the Holy Spirit, then the first thing we got to do is understand salvation with a greater understanding, and that's, that's beyond Sunday morning. Now, let me give you some ways of how we do that. We got to get outside of selfishness. Yesterday, we went to Modesto, and I wanted to eat, and and then I got this whole fasting thing coming up. I'm like, how am I going to handle that? And I was hungry, and I hadn't ate yet, and it was 2 o'clock, and I was grumpy and traffic, and all I did was grab the first place I could see where we could eat. And it wasn't that great. Don't worry about where it was, okay? <laughs> because I was impatient. I just did things my way. You know... It's not going to solve everything, getting beyond Sunday morning, getting beyond our, our needs and getting into what God wants requires us to love people that are difficult to love, requires us to, to, to want to get deeper than the, than the superficial of, of the day. Um, I'm walking like this and, and some, and I'm staying within the spot because I want us to be on camera, and some are saying, man, I wish that pastor would just stand right here. Deal with it. We got to get beyond that. Okay, we got to move beyond stuff that is just superficial. When we leave today, inflation is still going to be inflation. It is. Gas prices are still going to be above $5. It would be nice to be proven wrong, but they will be. Um, we're still going to have issues with all the politics of our world, no matter which party we want to support. There's going to be issues. We're still dry here. This forest could burn with just a spark. That's not going to change. It's not raining yet. But the Holy Spirit will be real in our lives if we move beyond the moment of my needs. When I preached here back in April, it was uh, Palm Sunday for candidating for a call. Uh, don't worry about that, but the point is we got on a plane Monday morning and we flew to Portland, and then from Portland we flew to Minneapolis, where Minnesota, where we live. And when we got on the plane, I sat next to a lovely young couple and I started fishing with them, talking about Jesus, and they showed me their smartphone. And in their smartphone, they were flying to Portland, and it said that their smartphone said that their house in Portland, the power was out, and they had 8 to 10 inches of fresh, wet, heavy snow the night before we flew. We flew on a Monday morning. Sunday night, they had this dumping of snow, and power was out all over Portland. And he said, I don't know if we're going to be able to land. Now, I am from Minnesota. I know enough about heavy, wet snow, and my mind's a great. So we get over Portland, and there's no descending. There's a lot of clouds, and we start flying in circles. And the pilot says, folks, my job is to get you on the ground safely. I really appreciate that he said that. And <clears throat> he said, because of that, we're going to fly to Seattle because it's nicer weather. We fly into Seattle. We get off the plane. It's 58, 54 degrees. It's partly cloudy. It's beautiful. And I look at the plane that my luggage is on. And I look through the window. And the, the person for the airline says, don't worry about a thing. Your luggage will be fine. It's going to go to Minneapolis as the plane that my luggage is on leaves. And I go to one of their desks. We're here to help you. We're looking it up right now on our smartphone. No, on their computer. It'll be fine. Your luggage will be an MSP. That's Minneapolis-St. Paul Airport tomorrow. So we get to Minneapolis. We don't have our luggage, but the guy that is at the airport at MSP says at 11.30 p.m. at night with his smartphone, and, and he's looking at it, and I happened to peek over his shoulder. That was not very bright of me because he was looking at Facebook. <laughs> 
At the same time, he told me, our luggage will be here tomorrow. Boy, did I want to blow. <laughs> I really did. I wanted to tell this guy, you know, I'm smart enough to know what Facebook is. I'm 57 years old, but I know what you're doing. But I didn't do that because I understood I need to give this young man a chance. So we went home Monday night, and we went to bed, and I called Tuesday, no luggage. I called Wednesday, no luggage. I called Thursday, no luggage. By now, Kelly is saying, you got to quit being nice. <laughs> and I was on the plane, or on the plane, I was on the phone, and I said, hey, could I talk to one of your managers? Now, I know they could have put me with Floyd from Winnipeg, but I thought I'd try it. And this lady gets on, and she was really nice. And she said, you know, there has been a mistake as I look She's, your luggage has been sitting in that airport for four days. <laughs> yeah, I know that. I'm trying to tell you that. Anyway, she said, this is wrong. This should have never got to this level, Mr. Candles. Should have never. I did not reveal that I'm a pastor yet. Should have never got to this level, Mr. Candles. And she emailed me while she was talking to me that told me Uber was l getting our luggage on a, on a car right there, and it would be at our house within an hour and a half. And she started to say, you know, the man that handled this needs to be fired. That hit. That hit hard. And I took a deep breath. I said, you're not going to, well, we're thinking about it. I said, I'm a Christian. I did. I said, I'm a Christian. I said, I'm, I'm a pastor. I said, let's be grateful. I did say this. I said, let's be grateful that I landed safely with my family. And let's put this thing aside. And she took a deep breath and she said, you know, you have a point, Pastor. I said, if he needs to be reformanded, he needs to be reformanded, but let's not lose a job over this. Are you hearing the Holy Spirit? Are you hearing the fact that it's not about our agenda? It is when we can meet God at the crossroads of our, my stubbornness and God's sovereignty on my knees. When they sung that song today, the Holy Spirit becomes real. When I can get beyond myself, all I needed was the, land, the, plan, the plane to land safely. I had luggage at home. I had clothes at home. Dollar General sells good clothes. It'll be fine. I just needed safe landing. Didn't need to get somebody fired. And they look, and when they gathered together in verse 6 and 7, so when they had come together, they asked him, here's me. I'm getting to the crossroads. I'm not there yet. Lord, is this the time you will restore the kingdom of Israel? And God, Jesus, replied in the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, three in one, it is not for you to know the times or the periods that the Father has set by his own authority. That's not an excuse to be lazy. That's not an excuse to say, you know what, pastor, somebody else will do it. I just need to rest. What it is, is to say that maybe this is the day to open up to the Holy Spirit. This is the day to say, here I am, Lord. This is the day to say, I want what you want for me. This is the day to find the crossroads of stubbornness and the sovereignty of God and say, speak to me, Spirit. And start getting to know God's sovereignty. Today, the, the music team sang this song, and Holy Spirit, come into this place. And, and I don't know the title, but it was Holy Spirit. And, and all of a sudden, I just felt this rain. It's just this fresh rain, because I was open enough to let music of the Holy Spirit speak to me and not get so wrapped up in the message. And that's a really sweet place to be. I don't know about you, but that's a place to get lost in the love of God. Just swimming in the Holy Spirit. And then being open to that next challenge. Getting beyond Sunday morning. Maybe I should spend some time in prayer. Maybe I should try this fasting and prayer. Maybe I should get to see what God wants for me beyond Easter Sunday. Which is every Sunday and every day. Maybe I should be grateful for the pilots that landed that plane safely because really my luggage hasn't set me back at all. What has it really done to me?
And is it worth getting a man fired? You've got to be kidding me. It was right there where I hit the Holy Spirit. And this person on the other end and I, she said, I'm a Christian too. And we actually prayed together. Let's find the crossroads of our stubbornness in God's sovereignty. And let's get to know who the Holy Spirit is this week. Let's see where that will take us. Let's see what that will do for us. Because then we gain what is called a Holy Spirit understanding. We begin to realize God's not here to free us from inflation. God's not here to to lower the gas prices. God's not here to solve world peace. God's not here to, to make sure that we get the vegetation just right so we can control all the forest fires. It's smart to do that. I think it's incredibly smart to do that. However, I need to know what God's agenda. God's here for me to talk to this person because God put this person right here. God's here to take advantage of what Adam had as a wisdom moment in the Holy Spirit a number of weeks ago, and now we have an opportunity as a congregation, a community, to pray and see where God wants to take us. If that ain't God, I don't know who is. And we get to come out of this thing on Wednesday and say, wow, look what's waiting for us. And we get to see the Holy Spirit at the crossroads of stubbornness and sovereignty. (laughs) To me, the, the Holy Spirit... It's like waiting for God to show up, and when the Holy Spirit shows up, it's crazy. Um, last April, I was the last week of April, and you all uh, solidified prayerfully, which needs to be done, extremely important, a vote to prayerfully take time to say, we want this guy as our pastor. And uh, Kelly and I were rejoicing in tears I felt a newfound freedom and, and a call of urgency. And then on a side note, this is a much lower level. It was the last week of April in Minnesota when this happened, the first week of May. And in Minnesota, it snows a lot. And it snows forever. And I'm getting, Rick Pierce had a tendency to EF, uh, text me the weather report every day. <laughs> God is my witness. I was here in January, late January, and your trees were just starting to bud, just starting to bud. I'm walking across the parking lot of the church I pastored in the first week of May, and it's snowing. I'm not making this up. It's snowing. It's just a wet little snow that melts on contact, piling on the car. It's been snowing forever since November, and I'm not happy. I'm looking at God going, why? It's May 1st. And then I noticed... I kid you not, I looked at the bushes as I'm walking into the entryway of the church. I kid you not, it's like May 5th, and and these little buds that are supposed to come out to become leaves, you know what I'm talking about, when it's spring, they they form on the trees, and they're, yeah, they're coming out, and it's snowing. And I'm looking at God, I'm going, what's wrong with this? This can't be, it's snowing. Just stop. And I was complaining about that, and a good friend of mine, uh, he, I pray for him daily, Bill and Nancy, and Bill's a farmer, he's, he's a cattle farmer, he raises beef cattle. We were having lunch together, and he said, you know, I'm tired of it too, Pastor. I'm tired. It's been long. I'm tired of it. But maybe God has a greater understanding of the snow we need for this spring than we do. Maybe God has a greater understanding than us. Could it be? That's where you say amen. God has a greater understanding than we do. Amen. But you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit... Does it say that I'll receive the power when I want the Holy Spirit? Does it say I'll receive the power when I'm ready for the Holy Spirit? Does it say I'll receive the power on my terms? 
But you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses in the rest of the known world. I have a young man here today, uh, Chris and Gail's son. Uh, he was raised by them. He came to Christ by them. And he comes back and feeds us. He also feeds other people. I'm not trying to lift you up, but do you understand what happens when we start witnessing and start exercising the Holy Spirit? People find Christ all over the world. We don't even hear about it. We teach our kids about Christ and people find Christ all over the world because we don't hear about it. It just keeps going and going and going and it doesn't stop. Because we want the Holy Spirit. They want the Holy Spirit. They want the Holy Spirit. They want the Holy Spirit. And we run into somebody from Kansas City and they say, oh, I remember you. I remember when you and I introduced Christ to each other. We work at camp. Pastor Tom's going to be heading to camp. I asked Christ into my heart when you were there, Tom, back in 1995. That's why I'm here today. You will receive the power of the Holy Spirit. If you choose to meet the Holy Spirit, the rest of the world will begin to realize who the Holy Spirit is because Groveland Evangelical Free Church wants to know who the Holy Spirit is. This would be an amen time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Come on. If we want to be on fire, we need to ask the Holy Spirit to come into our lives. Amen. Thank you. Amen. We do. <laughs> we do. And so the, the message that I have for us as I begin to wrap it up is, what are we going to do? You know, the, these things are here to say, what am I going to do this week? Um, one way to say, you know what, I'm just going to come back next Sunday. And that's okay. If that's where we're at right now, that's all right. But maybe there's something more to write down and, and put in our Bible and open it up on Monday and go, ah, oh, I want the Holy Spirit today. I want to give you a little tool. It's, it's very simple. If you're like thinking, Pastor, what do you want me to do? I don't know anything about the Holy Spirit. And that whole thing, talking another language, fears me. I get that. And I don't want to heal, um, I, I, I'm just, it scares me. Can I just invite you to pray a simple prayer, part of the fasting and prayer? You can write this down if you want. Very simple, very simple. Mean it, don't play patty cake with God, okay? What I mean by that is don't go into the gym and stare at the machine and think it's going to do for you whatever it's going to do by staring at it, <laughs> all right? It doesn't work. Treadmills collect dust for a reason. <laughs> it does not work. Holy Spirit, make yourself real to me. I'm going to repeat it. Holy Spirit, make yourself real to me. Holy Spirit, make yourself real to me. Holy Spirit, May, you can say it, make yourself real to me. Holy Spirit, make yourself real to me. Pray that each day this week. Now, if you want to do that as a religious task and say, I'm done, nothing's going to happen. But if you want to do it and you mean it, those of you, I know we have some of you here, you're, you're on the lake, you you like to do the water sports that I do, you're going to meet the Holy Spirit there. Those of you that like to quilt, you're going to meet the Holy Spirit there. Those of you that are working in town this week and the tourists are coming through, you're going to meet the Holy Spirit there. Those of you that are doing whatever it is you do, I go to Snap Fitness, I always say, Lord, I, I, I don't want this to be just a workout. I need that, trust me, but I'd like a little more. And God is so gracious. The Holy Spirit comes in. Hey, Pastor Bob, you're here today. Hey, Bob, you finally showed up. Hey. 
Holy Spirit, make yourself real. Just ask that. And when we do that, the most forgotten part of God comes into our life and we end up helping somebody that we never even knew. We end up talking to a lady and the lady says, oh, I, I think that it, we need to, this person needs to be fired. No, 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 no. It's way too far. We're off the tracks. Ma'am, I am a Christian. I am too, Pastor. You're right, we're not going to fire this man. Holy Spirit, make yourself real to me. Just use that as your prayer. It is going to happen. God is a lot more, trust me, he's smarter than us. I've read the book. It's true. Yeah. Yes. He's smarter than us. And when I get ready to meet God and the Holy Spirit and Jesus at the crossroads of my stubbornness and God's sovereignty, things happen. The rain starts coming down. And so I'm challenging you and I this week. Let's start figuring out who the Holy Spirit is. Show me a church that the Holy Spirit is real in. And I will show you a church that is alive. I will show you a community that is alive. Alive. That's an amen time. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, holy. Anyway, all right. We're get there. We're get there. We're going to get there. We got a lot to learn. We're going to spend a few weeks in looking at the Holy Spirit, a forgotten God. By the way, um, in, April, in August, August is August, April is April, in, in, in August, I am going to go on what is called a two-day sermon planning retreat. You're going to get emails about this, and I would like you to um, give me topics that, I that you would like me to preach on. I'm going to plan from September 1st until December 31st, and I'm going to make series out of your topics. Don't send me a topic, God. <laughs> All right? Jesus. <laughs> try to be a little specific. You don't have to write a book, but try to be a little specific. Just be thinking about that. But more importantly, Holy Spirit, make yourself 